This month, we celebrate the 100-year anniversary of a particularly interesting story from the history of astronomy. On April 26, 1920, at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., two gentlemen by the name of Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis faced off against one another in an intellectual discussion that came to be known as the Great Debate. The topic of conversation? Our universe. Could you get any bigger? The reason is what you see right behind me. I'm coming to you right now from the dark of the Sacramento State Planetarium, and projected on the dome behind me is what at that time was known as a spiral nebula. We know it now to be a galaxy, Messier 101, the pinwheel galaxy. But about a hundred years ago, we did not know that it was a galaxy. It was a spirally splotch on the sky. And the question raged, just what was this splotch and many others we had seen like it? Was it a cloud of gas and dust in our own Milky Way galaxy? A nebula like many other nebulae we had seen? Or was it in fact its own galaxy, an entire enormous island universe separate from the Milky Way and very, very far away? This was the topic being debated that night. On the one side, Harlow Shapley, arguing that the Milky Way was all there is. Our universe is the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is the universe, and these objects are just a part of our galaxy. On the other side, Heber Curtis, arguing, no, our universe is much more than just the Milky Way galaxy, and each one of these spiral nebulae we see in the sky is its own entire galaxy, as big, maybe even bigger, than our Milky Way, and living very, very far away. The arguments raged over the course of an entire day with papers being published afterwards and counter arguments presented. It wouldn't be until years later that the debate was truly and finally settled, but this event in 1920 was a foundational event to our understanding of the universe and our development of our cosmology. Let's imagine for a moment that we could listen in and recreate that bold day. You must admit it is quite curious that these spiral nebulae seem to lie only away from the plane of our Milky Way galaxy. We see many of them, but they are not distributed evenly across the sky. Perhaps the reason is this. Perhaps our own galaxy contains large planes and clouds of gas and dust blocking our view. Clouds of gas and dust, much like the ones we have already observed in some of our other spiral nebulae hinting that perhaps our Milky Way is just one of many objects in this class. Well, why don't we just start with the spiral nebula in the Andromeda constellation? That spiral nebula is quite large, but if it truly is as large as our Milky Way, as you claim, then it would have to exist incredibly far away to appear as small as it does on our sky. It'd have to be millions of light years away. Preposterous! Well, I don't know what to tell you, Mr. Shapley. I guess maybe the universe is bigger than we had originally imagined. Just because your mind can't comprehend distances of millions of light years doesn't mean they can't exist as preposterous as they might initially sound. Perhaps the universe truly is that large. Let's consider for a moment our own Milky Way galaxy. Current estimates by most of our colleagues suggest It is perhaps a few thousand parsecs across, but I have come to believe that it is quite a bit larger, perhaps even tens of thousands of parsecs across. If this were the case, this must truly be the entirety of the universe, for with something so expansive, so enormous, could there truly be anything beyond the tens of thousands of parsecs that I believe constitute our own Milky Way galaxy? I must admit that I find myself intrigued by your theories of a significantly larger size for the Milky Way than commonly predicted. But once again, I must fall back. Just because the Milky Way may be tens of thousands of parsecs across does not preclude there existing additional galaxies of similar expanse and size. We must not be limited by our tiny imaginations. But let us consider for a moment, for example, the Andromeda Nebula. It has been observed to contain novae, much as our own Milky Way galaxy does. And yet, 
we have consistently observed more novae from just the Andromeda Nebula than we do from our entire Milky Way. Surely this is evidence that it is a galaxy of its own, far away from us, containing its own enormous quantity of stars. I'm glad you bring up the novae of the Andromeda Nebula, for while I admit it is a bit confusing that there are so many present, I must ask you about the recently observed nova that briefly outshone the entire nebula. If it is indeed a galaxy, as you claim, that nova would have had to have been preposterously bright and energetic. Some kind of super-powered nova. Ha! You laugh, but perhaps that is precisely what we observed. Some kind of nova of significantly greater strength and intensity than the novae we generally observe. Some kind of supernova. We have observations historically of such events, bright stars appearing in our very own night sky, of luminosities well beyond anything that we observe in traditional novae. This could very well be a new class of rare event. Let's consider for a moment the Pinwheel Nebula. Our colleague has observed rotation on the outer edges of the Pinwheel Nebula. If indeed this nebula is an entire galaxy of its own, as you claim, far away and incredibly huge, it would have to be rotating at faster than the speed of light, which as we all know is perfectly impossible. There's no conceivable way that an object of that size, such as you claim, could rotate with such velocities. I must admit that the observations of the Pinwheel Nebula pose a serious problem for my theories. If it is indeed rotating as claimed, then it cannot possibly be an island universe, a galaxy of its own outside of our Milky Way. My only recourse is to hope that perhaps somehow the observations were mistaken, or the method flawed, and it is not in fact rotating at the claimed rates. I simply don't know. 